So if you were using an Apple device like an Apple iPhone or the MacBook or even an iPad, you could easily get sound from these devices into the Sonos ecosystem, be it a soundbar or any of the music capable speakers. Why? Because Sonos supports AirPlay 2 and almost all Sonos products that is being sold today, save for the older Play series speakers, will support AirPlay 2. Now, AirPlay 2 is limited to just Apple devices. So if you are using an Android or a Windows PC, which I have right in front of me, you can't actually use AirPlay 2. So how are you able to then get sound from your PC into a Sonos device. So there are a couple of ways. One of them is Bluetooth, which the new era speakers will support, as well as Line In, which is limited to the Sonos 5s or the Sonos M, and basically any of the era or the Move speakers, which has a USB-C port. Short of using Bluetooth, you are still gonna be having to use cables. But we have a small problem. Now, I like to talk about the two types of sound, two types of content they're gonna be watching that will require you to send audio from your devices to the Sonos devices. So the first is audio only sound. So if it is just music and you're not having to watch anything in the video format, you won't have any issues trying to match what you're hearing with what you're seeing. Now, the second type of content that you're gonna be hearing sound from is AV content, audio visual content. In other words, when something is playing on the screen, the sound is coming out and you need the two to match. When the two do not match up, you have what is known as a lip sync issue. And for lip sync issue, some people are sensitive to it, some are less sensitive to it, but there will be some serious delay and lag which will cause anyone to throw up. Now, before we go on further, let me give you a demonstration of what I mean by delay. So what I have here is I have a Sonos Arc in this room. I, well, actually, I have a lot of Sonos set up in this room. I also have a pair of Apple HomePods, and this is to demonstrate that it is not a problem that's limited to the Sonos speakers. It's actually the AirPlay 2 implementation. So what I have here is a MacBook. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the Mac through AirPlay 2 to one of my Sonos setup. Maybe let me try how about the Sonos M. So the Sonos M is right here on the table. Can you see what well, is just here? It's driving a pair of Sonos in ceiling speakers coupled with a sub mini. So now that it's hooked up, let me play something for you. Play days or even a week, uh, listening to it just even like three hours a day without it running out of battery. Whereas the room will only last about 10 hours. Of course, it depends on the volume that you're playing at. So if you're playing it, Look at the lips. it will probably not last as long because it has a bigger driver. And, so uh, there is isn't actually a lip sync issue, well. but there is another problem. So how AirPlay does lip syncing is to delay the audio input or rather output in the first place. So if I were to click play now, in two more tweeters, whereas on the room, and I were to click stop, now the stereo imaging from, you realize that there is a huge delay of about two seconds before the sound comes on or before the video stops playing. And this is how Apple's implementation of AirPlay 2 gets around the lip syncing problem. But to be fair, when the video is playing, the video and the audio do match up perfectly. And this is with a Sonos M. Now I'm gonna try it on the maybe Sonos Arc to give you a sample that even on a slightly newer device, you're still gonna be facing the same issues, All right? So now it's AirPlaying to the Sonos Arc, clicking play. Of the stereo imaging from the mode, clicking stop, which is capable of stereo because of the dual. Yep, so the delay is still there. And like I mentioned earlier, this is not limited to Sonos devices. So I'm gonna uh, route the sound via AirPlay to a pair of home pods. Where are my home pods? Okay, now it is on home pods. I'm gonna click play. Because of the dual tweeter, uh, and I'm going to click stop. You're going to get white sounding stereo sound stage. You, yep. So there's a good two seconds delay before the video actually stops or 
when the before the audio actually kicks in and this is how they get rid of the lip sync issue now to be fair this is a pair of airpods max now when you pair a pair of airpods max with either your ipad or your iphone or even your mac os uh, laptop or studio pc you do not get that problem the sound comes on instantly the video starts playing almost instantly so to say that this is purely an airplay problem I wouldn't think so. So it is probably an implementation difference between uh, personal audio devices as well as full-size speakers. And I don't quite know why that is the case. Maybe um, it is the implementation switching between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I don't actually know how Apple works, but I know that if you want to get sound to match between audio and video images, or rather content on the screen, you are going to get serious delays and you're gonna feel like something is wrong because the pc doesn't feel responsive when you click play and you click stop now there is a setting within the sonos s2 app that you can go to and the setting allows you to set audio delay but note that the audio delay that setting does not affect the airplay 2 implementation so whether you set it to 75 millisecond or the 2000 millisecond which is two seconds it actually doesn't remove this problem so why am i making this video today now the thing is that i really want to get sound coming from a pc or a laptop um, and listen to it via a sonos device right it's not limited to whether it's the sonos arc or anything now what i used to do was i linked up the pc to the LG CX TV. And uh, well, this is the one I have here. This is the LG CX TV. I have not actually used it um, recently because I have set up a new PC and the PC is quite a distance away from where the TV is, as you can see. So I can't and I don't want to be dragging HDMI cable from the PC to the TV. And from the TV, it is actually connected to the Sonos Arc via a HDMI e -Arc port. So that allows the PC to throw the sound to the TV, which will then relay it to the Sonos Arc. And that way I can get um, the PC sound coming out from a Sonos Arc and there are no delays whatsoever. But this particular setup I have here, this is the PC. Um, I'm linking up to a monitor. This is a 34 inch wide screen monitor and it does not have any HDMI e -arc port. So the only way I'm going to be able to get sound out of it is either via Bluetooth or a 3.5 mm. Now, 3.5 mm output is available on most PCs and on most laptops. So as a uh, as daring, as bold as Apple is, they have not really removed the 3.5 mm jack from their laptops. Now, the 3.5 mm jack is ubiquitous. It is an analog form of output, which you can then plug in any number of uh, earphones or headphones that you want and be able to get sound instantly in the easiest of way. And it doesn't even have to be a powered device. So for the PC, if I wanted to get sound out of it, I'm actually relying on the 3.5 mm output. Not all PCs have optical digital output and most laptops, in fact, I don't think there's a laptop that I have used in the recent two decades that has an optical output. So I have to rely on the 3.5 mm. Now to get the 3.5 mm out, there are a couple of devices I can use. I can use the ERA series, I can use the Move, uh, Move 2, which has a USB port, which will accept a USB dongle that will convert an analog 3.5 mm signal into the Sonos ecosystem and from there I can listen to it but I am not trying to do that right now and in fact what I have is a Sonos M so the Sonos M has a pair of RCA inputs left and right channel which you can find an easy cable or easy converter to convert the 3.5 mm output into RCA line level output to be plugged into the Sonos M and that implementation will be similar to the ERA 100 the Move 2 or the ERA 300 for the analog input but when you do that there is a slight issue and i'm going to demonstrate that issue to you right now okay so the sonos m is now set up to output sound from the pc so i'm going to click play right now this is my video okay click play one two three play it will probably fit into your palm or your bag or have a sack or your backpack depending on what you're putting in your mouth uh, fairly easy to do this you probably won't stop it in your bag and you probably want to carry it up there is a serious lip sync issue so you have that 2000 milliseconds lag now this you can actually fix via the audio delay settings 
in the Sonos S2 app, right? So we are not going through AirPlay, we are actually going into the line in setting. So go to the Sonos amp or maybe the ERA 300 or the moves um, and go to the line in input and under line in, you're gonna see audio delay. So if you click through to audio delay, Sonos for some strange reasons, maybe for compatibility and stability reasons, they have decided to set the audio delay to a max of 2000 milliseconds. That's a full two seconds. So. 1,000, 2,000, then it starts talking, right? And even at that point, it doesn't match up. So whatever you're hearing is not matching with the lips. So this is actually far worse than what AirPlay 2 is doing in order to resolve the lip sync issue. At least when the video starts playing via AirPlay 2, it actually syncs up completely and seamlessly. Whereas in this particular case, even after the delay, the lips and the sound that's coming out is still not in sync. But there is a very easy way to solve this. So in the same panel, under audio delay, you're gonna set the audio delay latency from a max of 2000 milliseconds all the way down to 75 milliseconds. Now, this determines the amount of time that Sonos has to process the analog input and convert it to a digital signal, which it will then play and allow um, syncing the sound throughout the whole Sonos ecosystem across all the speakers that you have. So, of course, to convert the signal from analog to digital, it requires a bit of time. Uh, 75 milliseconds is actually good enough. A frame in a picture is rendered in like 10 milliseconds or so. So I can't imagine converting audio signals from analog to digital to take that amount of time. Now, when I set it to 75 milliseconds, this is the result. Now, this Move 2 is actually resting in a wireless charging. Well, they call it wireless, but actually there are two pins at the back which will connect mm. to these two. Okay, so at this point, you cannot actually detect any lip sync issues anymore. Now, there are some people who are definitely going to be more sensitive to it and might actually hear something, but the truth of the matter is you're not going to be able to detect it in a day-to-day -day use case scenario. So say, for example, when a gun fires off on screen and the flag comes out, the sound of the gunshot is going to reach you about exactly at about the same time, maybe one or two frames. If you do a, a simple division of one second over 75 milliseconds, and you consider that there are usually about 24 frames in a second of video, you're gonna be one or maybe two frames behind. So when you are listening to something that needs to be synced with the video, this setting will actually remove all audio lag. So I have been using the PC in this configuration, um, just a very quick note about the PC and I just want to talk a little bit about the setup. So now I have already given you how to actually do the audio settings um, to avoid delay. I'll talk a little bit about this setup that I have here. This is a Fractal Design uh, Terra case. Now this is a ITX casing, very small, very compact. If I could just open it up and show you what I have configured inside, this is a NVIDIA RTX Founders Edition RTX 4070. It's a mid-tier mid um, graphics card. It is, well, actually I bought it because it looks really, really cool. Um, I'm very sure some of you will have uh, better ideas of what is a better 4070 card to buy, but I really like this. It's not readily available in Singapore, but um, well, I managed to get my hands on one after a retail store shipped one in. Now, um, to see what is actually being configured, actually I have to flip the PC to the other side, um, which I won't do because the cable that I have that is hooking up the M, the Sonos M right here, is actually pretty short. So I can't, well, well, no, it's too much of a hassle. Um, I'm just gonna turn it slightly. Very, very small compact case. This is a Ryzen 5 uh, CPU inside. And well, I've got, some fans being lighted up. I modified the casing a little bit uh, to push more air to cool the very tightly packed insides of this PC casing. Okay, so that's it. The Sonos M here is actually driving my two ceiling speakers and the two ceiling speakers are the Sonos 
in ceiling speakers from Sonos. So they do get detected as architectural series speakers from Sonos and I'm able to tune TruePlay. Now, I have a couple of things that I want you to note when you are doing this setup. So most important thing to note is that you are going to end up having to control two volume slider. So one volume slider is on the Sonos M itself. The second volume slider is actually from the PC itself. So on the Sonos S2 app, you actually have to go inside the S2 app setting for the Sonos M. And when you go inside the Sonos M and you scroll down, you will see that there is a line in and line in has the audio delay. That's what I spoke about just. And there's a source level. So on the source level, there's level one, which is low, all the way to level 10, which is high. So this is to indicate which component you are connecting via line in. So in this particular case, I selected level eight, which is um, level eight portable PC, a portable player and PC, and this is a PC. Now, the higher you select, the louder the sound is going to play throughout your Sonos M. Now, level one is low level, level two is AV component, and the list goes on, right? You just take a look at that and you can set that accordingly. So, if your volume is not high enough, make sure that you have selected high enough a source level in this settings page. So, when I mentioned that there are two volume sliders to control, because the Sonos M doesn't know what volume your output level is on your PC. So on the PC, you can select the volume vo level and on the M, you can select a separate volume level. And let's say you're on 50% on the Sonos M and 50% on the PC, you're going to get about 25% of the max possible levels and volumes you're going to be getting out of your setup. So my recommendation is to put the Sonos M at about 50, maybe 60%, and then you control the volume on the PC or any connected devices that you have to the Sonos M, and that will make it a lot easier. You don't have to go into the S2 app anytime. You don't have to use the volume controls on the Sonos M all the time. Now, when you have this setup, and I'm doing gaming, uh, watching any videos, including videos of myself on the PC, you will actually be able to control the volume pretty easily just using the PC. So what I like to show you next is the possibility that you are then able to connect the Sonos M uh, output to any Sonos devices or speakers or soundbars that you have in your home. In my particular case, I have actually paired a sub mini to the Sonos M so that you don't just get more bass out of it. But you could also technically pair in a pair of Sonos 5s, you could pair in a pair of the ERAs 100 or the 300 or the Sonos Up into the whole system, but do note that it is still going to be stereo, there is no up mixing from there. So for this particular case, maybe now I have the Sonos M, maybe I want to uh, group in the Sonos ERA 100, I'll group in the Move 2. Okay, I click Done, and here... Yep. So there you go. So whatever you you have the sound that's coming out from other speakers as well, not just the Sonos amp that is being connected to the. Hmm. I realize I've been talking with myself talking and that guy is interrupting me. So I'm saying that you can actually get sound from any Sonos speakers that you have in your ecosystem, not just the Sonos M that is being connected to the PC at this point in time. Okay, so I hope you have found this video useful and I didn't think that I was going to make such a long video. I just wanted to show you guys about the lip sync issue and how you can remove it. So I thought of more things to say and I went on and on. Uh, well, but basically that is the style of my video. I release videos over the weekends, maybe once a week. And uh, I try to say as much as I can. I try to share as much as I have with you. So if you found this video useful, thumbs up, please. And maybe subscribe to the channel. And anything new from Sonos, anything new that's interesting and catches my eye, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, wireless audio stuff, I'll be reviewing on this channel. So check out one of these other videos that I've done before. If they interest you, I hope to see you around much more often. Thank you and next week.